notice here are uh, there are a couple of kind of what we call poles here where a lot of points come into or a lot of edges rather come into one point now most of the time if you have a five pole where five edges meet at a point that's completely fine uh, here we have a couple that are six poles so we got six edges coming in and sometimes that can be something that you might want to take out for instance if you're using turbo squid and you want to use uh, you want to become checkmate certified uh, you'll want to remove those poles and so uh, if you need to do that we can come in here and for instance on this edge one of the ways we can do this would just be to take that edge out so that removes that pole and then we could come in and maybe connect that across so we'll use line mode and maybe come across there like that oops I want to actually come across like that so we want to come across to that edge and then I could take this point and kind of move it now it depends on the the uh, the resolution and where it is so if it's going to cause you problems with deformation for instance you have edges in the wrong spots then what you can do is you, you can add more resolution to the arm and you could remove that by extending edges going this way okay but it's up to you let's uh, take this piece there's another one on the bottom if you want to get rid of that too right there uh, but let's go ahead and move on by taking this hand and I just want to put this in kind of position here so let's rotate it around obviously we need to scale it down s to get a little bit closer to that I'm just going to switch over so I can just use world mode to move this around here and then again I can kind of rotate this get it in a rough position here and the fingers the position of the fingers aren't going to match exactly with the artwork but I just want to get it kind of close there so something like that really you want it to look good here in your view and we can kind of rotate it a little bit so the points match up a little bit better let's move it down a little so there's a little bit more room there let's take this wrist I grab this and I just want to make it a little bit bigger now if you remember we want to make this one piece first and so we'll take both of these connect and delete and then we can take our edges so we'll select boundary loops let's do stitch and sew and we'll just sew it together just like that then we can come back with our brush and kind of smooth it all out right because you can see how it doesn't really match up very well there so we can come in here use our transform tools we have our object selected that is and just kinda smooth it out a little bit and you can use you know push and pull points as well to kinda get it exactly the way that you want okay we can come in here and let's just use smear and I can kinda pull this out right to kind of thicken up the base of the hand just so we keep that thickness on the wrist and just start to think of this as one seamless mesh so I can kind of thicken it up that way we need to bring back the thumb a little bit and kind of smooth this geometry out so we get something like that okay now for the leg you just want to do the same thing that we did with the arm so bring in a cylinder and for the the opening of the leg you remember you had one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so for the leg we can make it ten segments so I'll take this down to ten 
add a few segments in the height. Oops, there we go. Take the radius down a little bit, and then we just can come in and match it up from the front and the side. And again, let's keep it on the same side, so we'll move it over here. And now let's just turn off the caps and make that editable. And then at this point, we just do the same exact thing. I'm just going to scale down these. Let's call this the knee. So we'll move it into position. Let's scale this down and move it. So just scaling and moving from in two different views is going to get us pretty close to where we want to go. Move that over. Scale it down. We'll do the same thing up here. Move this over a little bit. Now as we get closer to the top, we want to start to kind of rotate this around a little bit. Kind of like that. So I get that close and then come in from the side and you can see oh, I can bring the knee forward a little bit. Let's actually bring this back to get the shape of the leg. And we'll bring this forward. All right, so we want to get to a state that is similar to that. All right, so in the next lesson, let's take a look at adding the foot to this basic, the, uh, the leg here, and add a, just a little bit more resolution in here. So I grab the right object. And I'm just going to use the knife with the loop. I'm going to drop a loop in there right around the calf and then also a couple right around the knee. And then let's take, let's actually just add one right here. And then I'm just going to take these and kind of smooth them out a little bit. So I'll kind of bring that in and scale it down just as we were doing before. And I'll kind of move that back. Let's take this back a little bit. And then on this one, where the calf is, I'm just going to widen that up a little and still move it back, just so we get a little bit of that indication of the calf back here. And again, I'm making this a little bit larger than the drawing because it is going to be smoothed. Okay, and then you can take a look at it here as well. Kind of move it over just a little bit. So it gives us a little bit more of a, a good leg shape there. Now, I want to build the foot off of here, but the leg, I've built it so that it is angled just a little bit. So I'm going to call this line the front of the leg going straight down the knee. And so I want the foot to come straight out this way. So it's going to come out at a little bit of an angle. So to start, let's uh, take the end of this. And now looking at this, I think this is going to be our front line. So let's go to mesh, um, and then I want to make sure I select the leg. Go to polygons, um, and let's go to mesh, create, close polygon hole. We'll close that up. Now I'm going to take the knife and draw a straight line from the front to back, and I want to make sure I've got the knife selected, and I'll choose line mode. Turn off single. There we go. So we'll bring it across like that. Um, and then we can also come in here and go across. And you can go all the way across. You don't have to stop in the middle. So that allows us to create those bottom faces here, which are connected. Let's take those bottom faces and do an extrude. So I'm going to kind of pull this down a bit. And now I want to select these polygons right here. And let's do an extrude. So I'll kind of pull these out a little bit, and then I'll just use the axis to kind of pull it out a little bit further. And we can use the sort of side and front views to get it 
the rough you know, size that we want to have here. Let's grab the points themselves on the bottom. I'm just going to pull it down a little bit. Now, obviously, we need to, to add a little bit more shape to this, but we don't really have a chance to do that because we don't have enough resolution in here. So let's go in and add some lines. So we'll go to the knife. We go back to loop. And I'm just going to start to drop in some loops. And now we can just go in and begin shaping this. So you can do it point by point. You could use brush, the brush tool to shape it. Uh, but I'm going to kind of bring this down. You can grab kind of all these points. And you can see kind of where it needs to be here. So you can kind of real roughly bring that down a little bit, grab the maybe the toes. Keeping in mind this is going to be smoothed out. And then I want to add a little bit of that foot shape. So I'll come here on kind of the sides and keep in mind this is the outer part of the foot. So I'll kind of pull this down a little bit. I can bring this down as well to kind of match up with that. Let's do the same thing over here. And now it's just kind of a matter of, of shaping this foot. I want to leave a little bit more of the bridge of the foot, or the arch rather, up at the top. Okay, so we can get a little something like that. Now if you want to create sort of the boot bottom of this, you can select the polygons just at the bottom. Let me go ahead and select all these across here. So we just have the ones at the bottom. Let's do another extrude. We'll kind of pull that down a little bit. And to create the seam for the sole, pretty simple to do. We can go ahead and just grab the magnet and let's just add a couple loops right over here. And then I'll go to edge, go to a loop selection, turn off boundary loop. And then we'll kind of scale this in a little bit. And then anytime we smooth geometry, it's going to be very soft when we don't have a lot of geometry, a lot of resolution there. So this is going to be very soft. So to tighten that up, you want to add supporting edges. So this will tighten up the bottom edge. This will tighten up these edges up here. Okay. Now we also want to start to connect this up. So let's take both of these and connect them. And then we can just come in and use our stitch. So let me go select loop. And we don't want to select the two boundaries. And then I'll just stitch this together. And I think we want to go right here. And then you can just use your knife to add an edge in there and kind of soften things up a little bit. Okay. So I spent a little bit more time tweaking the shape of the foot. It could probably be a little bit wider, so you might want to widen it out a little bit. Uh, but the next thing that we'll do is go ahead and start to block in. Uh, you might think that you'd want to start with a sphere, and you could do that, but I'm going to actually start with a cube with the idea that I'm going to be smoothing it in the end. It just gives me a little bit more control over the shape and, and the, the topology of it. It's a little bit simpler to work with. So I'm going to start with a cube. Let's bring it up into position. I'm just going to use the handles to size it appropriately. So come in here from the side and come in here from the front. And then we need to add a little bit of resolution to this to begin to shape it. So in the segments, let's add a few in the X, maybe four. I want to make sure that there's one running right down the center. On the In the Y, I'm going to increase those. We'll add a few more of those because it's covering more distance. Uh, we can add more as we go along, but we just want some to get started with. And then in the Z, let's add a few going in this direction. So... Add three there. I think three is going to be a good starting point.
I don't want to add too many because then it's going to be really hard to get away from the squared off shape. Uh, but if we add just a few, that allows us to, to be able to work with just the, the polygons that are here. So let's go ahead and make this editable. And then just to simplify things a little bit, let me go ahead and delete half of this. So go ahead and grab half of those polygons, delete them, and then I'm going to go to the points and optimize those. And then we can start to manipulate the shape of this. So we can start by going to one of the views here. And I can come in and start to move some of these points around. And I'll kind of move that down a little bit. Okay, so just kind of add a little bit of shape to this. Again, just from the one angle. And the points up here, we're going to kind of move back to get this rounded off shape. Sorry about that. And then come down here. And just pull these points in so that it matches a little bit better with our art. Here we'll kind of pull this up a bit. Now we need to do the same thing from the side. Don't worry about the eyes just yet. And don't move the points that are sort of in the middle. You can start to bring this up. And now at some point, we're going to have to come in from the perspective and start to soften this out. So what we want to do is we want to take these edges and sort of round off the squareness of it. So for instance, just take these corner bits, pull that back and over. Okay, start to kind of round things off a little. We'll do the same thing down here. Kind of take that forward and in. Take these bits up here, kind of pull those down a little. So you can see we can really start to, to round this off. But you want to take the time to do that because otherwise it'll be, it'll kind of stay squared off and you'll get kind of a square shaped head. And so we want to make sure to grab these points and just make sure to round off basically all the corners of it. And down here where the kind of bottom of the neck, we can also kind of bring that up. Okay, so you just want to come in and there are, you know, there's not a lot of points here, so it's easy to come in now and kind of just make sure that it's in the right spot. You can also use uh, you can also use a brush. So let's go in here and grab the brush. I've just got it set to smooth. We can come in along these corners, and if you want to increase the strength, you can do that. And so we can come in here and and just along those corners, kind of smooth things out. Remember, don't really touch the the interior where it's you know we've got that line for the symmetry but just kind of round things off here you can see we've got this these points down here that need to be kind of rounded off okay so we get something like that so let's get to that point okay and if you want to use you know if you want to come in here with instead smear and come in and sort of move things around if you feel like that'll help a little bit, you can do that too. Kind of come in from the side. Okay, maybe kind of pull this back to create more of the, the head shape that we see in the drawing. So get something like that, okay? Now we've got the rough overall shape, but we don't really have any of the uh, topology built in to create things like the mouth, or the eyes and things like that. So uh, let's go ahead and begin to manipulate the actual flow of edges in the right place to be able to add things like the mouth and, 
and up at the, around the eyes and stuff. So let's go into the, the side view here. And we can see his mouth sort of extends out. He's got this kind of overbite. It's right up here. Well, we need some edges there to start to define that a little bit more. So uh, we can either use this edge or we can add another edge. Let's start by, with kind of what we have and then add edges from there. So I'm just going to select these points. I'm just going to move them up into kind of the right spot here. And here we can kind of just move these to, so it's, you know, kind of smoothed off there as far as the placement of it goes. Let's go to the knife and I'm just going to add a loop right in here. Be careful when you add these loops. You want to go all the way to the end to add it in. And then we can come in and we'll just pull this out a little bit. Kind of use that to better define the shape of the head. Okay. And let's kind of pull these points out here kind of where this his mouth and nose is starting to come out now here is where we want to start to to kind of split this apart you can see this is all sort of connected up if I kind of pull this out okay so one way to sort of just start doing that is to just make a cut that goes kind of all the way up in here. Now I want to have, I don't want to just come to a point right in the corner of the mouth. I want to have a little bit of room there. And we're actually going to have um, a several lines kind of coming in there. So to make room for that, I'm going to kind of move this up a little bit. And then instead of drawing this out right to this point, let's actually just add another loop. So we'll do knife. Add another loop kind of right in there. And then let's select the polygons from the front here. So I'm going to select just like that guy. And let's select this one. And I think one more. And we'll go ahead and delete those. And then we can come in from the side and get that overbite. Start to come in and take these points here and pull these back into the head a little bit more. Again, just in that one axis though. And then we can kind of take some of these other points, move them up. Kind of move this one back a little bit so we can start to get that rough mouth shape in there so you can see we get something it's pretty rough but something like that now around the eyes we want to have kind of a loop structure so we could do like a blink if we wanted to and so I want to, to come in and create a little bit more resolution right in here. So let's select this edge loop. And I'll turn off boundary. And I want to stop at the boundary. So I'll stop right there. And let's use bevel. I'm just right clicking to access those. And that allows to add a couple of new edges in here. And let's add, add one more edge loop right in here. And then I want to define an area where I want this uh, eye socket to be. So I want there to be a little bit of separation between the upper lip and the eye socket. So I'll kind of bring these points down a little bit. And I'm thinking of at least having four faces define the area where we'll bring that eye in. And so I'll just kind of start to move some of these points around a little bit. To create kind of a circular shape, sort of right in there. Okay, now you can see it sort of beginning to form. 
right there. Now some of these are getting sort of off so we can pull those out in that particular axis if we want to, but we'll be able to detail these a little bit more once we've got the eye actually built in, but you can kind of see where we're thinking about putting it. So from the side, it's kind of right there, right in here. And just to make that clear, we can select those. I'm going to hit I to insert. You can also right click and go to extrude inner. Uh, did I say insert? I meant extrude inner. Um, and we can extrude that in. And that gives you kind of an indication of where that eye is going to go. Now, if we want to see this kind of unfolding on the other side as we work, we can go ahead and add a symmetry object. And then all we have to do is drag the piece of geometry underneath symmetry. And you can get a better idea. So you can see he's really coming to a point there. So this gives us a, a good idea of, okay, I need to come in and grab these points and kind of move them forward a little bit. So it lets you kind of see. And then later on, you'll be able to bake that down into real geometry. But here, it just allows us to see both sides at once. And if you're just starting out working symmetrically, then this may be a better way to do it. After a while, though, you'll start to understand, you know, how things are going to look. But oftentimes, they'll be a little bit too pointy when you, uh, when you do that. So it's always a good idea to kind of check. Okay, I also want to maintain this sort of underbite. So I'm going to kind of take this lower lip and jaw inside of this upper one a little bit more. All right, so it's starting to look like something anyway. So let's get it to this point where we've got the mouth sort of cut out, and then we also have an area for the eye defined. And in the next lesson, let's symmetry uh, inside here. Okay, we want to have this sort of closed off. And so we have the symmetry generator here, which is creating the other side of the geometry. So um, let's actually bake this down. Now you can see on the back here as I'm checking around that some of these points are off. So to fix that, all we have to do is come in and select that cube. Let's select all the points that should be in the middle. Okay, so all, those are all the points in the middle of that, uh, that center line. And let's right click and go to set point value. And we're going to set the value in the X. So we'll say set. And let's set it to a value of 0. And that's just going to snap all those points to the midline. Now if we turn that back on, you can see that looks a lot better. Okay, so the reason that I'm going to bake this down is just easier to deal with this as one whole border edge. And so let's take this symmetry and let's just make it editable. And that gives us a cube right here that is both sides. So now we've taken out the symmetry and it's one object. So now what we can do is select our, our loop selection and I want to select a boundary loop. And so we'll select the inside of the mouth here. Now let's right click and go to extrude and let's extrude this out a little bit. And then I want to change the edge angle. And so I'm going to take this down to about minus 90 or so and that'll extrude it sort of in there and then we can change the offset a little bit more and that kind of gives us a little bit of the sort of thickness of the lip there okay let's do the same thing again kind of pull this in and this time we can kind of change that value down a little bit more and we can start to just kind of pull this back and let's also kind of scale it in a little bit So we start to get this geometry kind of coming back and inside. Let's also sort of scale it in. And as it comes in, it can start to get kind of smaller. We're not going to be adding a bunch of detail here inside of the mouth, but we just want it to be sort of closed off. Okay. Now, once we get this sort of started, then I can come in again and get rid of half of this. So let me just select this half. Delete it, and again, I'll optimize the points by getting rid of those, or get rid of them by optimizing, rather. And so you can see here is where we have our 
the inside of our mouth starting to form. And then now that we've got the other half deleted, it gives us a little bit more freedom in where these points are. So we can come in and start to kind of move these individual points up and out of the way. Now I probably want to come in and use the knife with loop on and then just kind of create a little bit more of, of a kind of a lip there. And we can do the same thing here. Kind of move this up just a little. Okay, and kind of pull this over. And depending on how detailed you want to get, you could extend this so it kind of comes down and starts to go down towards the throat. That way you kind of get the back of the mouth. We're not going to add too much detail in here, so we can cut this off, you know, pretty pretty soon. And so um, to do this, we can come in and let's just say, okay, I want to bridge, and let's bridge between these two edges. Um, and then we can just go to close polygon hole, close that up, and then we just use our knife to draw across here. So we've got edges there so we can just take our knife let's go to a line and we'll draw one there to right down there okay and then let's take this bottom this point right here and we'll just kind of move it down a little bit move this in a bit and then if you know if you want to we can grab these faces on the back and we can just kind of move those back or we can do an extrude and extrude them back if we want to start to change this even a little bit more. Just keep in mind that you'll want to delete that inner face. Oops. Delete that inner face and it looks like I've got an extra face right down here which I want to get rid of. Okay, so you get something like that for that inner mouth. And then you can always go back and check and just make sure that all those inner points there are still where they need to be. So set point value zero, pop those over. So then if you popped a uh, symmetry back in, drop this underneath, you should get that inner mouth there. So you get something like that. Okay, so... Once you've got the inner mouth created, you know, the mouth bag or mouth sack, sometimes it's referred to, uh, we'll go ahead and kind of add some detail to the mouth. So think about this is going to be a really important area of the mouth, this corner of the mouth.